When evaluating preoperative films in anticipation of endodontic treatment, it's important to consider the films thoughtfully and carefully. In this instance, you can begin to plan, in other words, start with the end in mind, and it would be wise in this case if we could remove the clinical crown, which is a porcelain fused to metal restorative, because that will shorten the tooth and oftentimes will allow us to work with shorter instruments, which is an advantage. The treatment sequence is pretty much what I've taught since the 70s, but we want to secure the coronal two-thirds of the canal with 10 and 15 hand files. If, in fact, there is a glide path, we can shape this region with a couple instruments. In this case, the Shaper 1 and the Shaper 2 from the ProTaper nickel titanium system. With the upper two-thirds adequately pre-enlarged, and in the presence of a viscous chelator, we can scout the rest of the canal. Once we have working length and a patent canal, it would be wise to ascertain if we could use rotary instruments or would the case be better served to use a manual set of instruments. If in fact we have a glide path, we would shape this region of the canal with the ProTaper Shaper 1, followed by the ProTaper Shaper 2, and we would at least go to the first finishing instrument, the F1, which is a 2007. Other cases may require larger finishers to more adequately prepare the apical one-third, but this would represent the simplest way of using ProTaper because in many posterior teeth, it really is as simple as three instruments to get the final shape. As we've talked about in other just-in-time shows, the importance of sequencing the treatment provides many advantages. So once we have a tentative working length, I'm just not going to allow the rubber stop to reach the chosen reference point. I'm going to allow the working length on the stop to be about three stops short of that selected reference point. This means our instruments will be confined to the upper two-thirds. Clinically, we like to work with assistance to benefit the economy of time, and the viscous chelator can be handed over where we can dispense it into the pulp chamber. In the presence of a viscous chelator, we would begin to immediately secure the canal, with first the 10, followed by the 15 hand file. We'd want to work about two-thirds of the overall length of the canal. The rubber stop would then be pushed down on the selected reference point. The instrument is withdrawn, and that length would be transferred to the first rotary shaping file. We always secure canals in the presence of a viscous chelator, but we always shape canals in the presence of an aqueous solution, such as sodium hypochlorite. The hero aspect of the ProTaper shaping files is their progressively increasing percentage tapers over the length of a single instrument. These instruments are used optimally like a brush, so we can brush into irregularities and eccentricities off the rounder part of canals. By brushing and creating lateral space, this allows the instrument to move progressively deeper into the canal. After every rotary file, irrigate, recapitulate with the 10 file, and re-irrigate to liberate that debris. Working with the assistant, we can load up the Shaper 2, and you can see how we just did that. It's kind of a nifty little idea that you can get your assistants enrolled to. Float into the canal, and before resistance, begin to brush. Brushing away from furcal danger. Brushing makes lateral space and allows the bigger Eiffel Tower blades to progressively cut and engage dentin more down into the middle one-third of the root. Again, once the rubber stop has reached the reference point, our work is done and we have optimally pre-enlarged the coronal two-thirds of the canal. Notice all the debris in the pulp chamber. So the reminder is, after every rotary, irrigate, recapitulate with a tin file to make sure you always have the glide path, and then break up debris, move it into solution, and then re-irrigate to liberate that debris. Since we've never been in the apical third, we want to put in a viscous chelator, and through a little bit of effort, we'll carry first a 10 and then a 15 to length. Once we have a known working length in a patent canal, we check the glide path. And recall, when we check for the glide path, we never reciprocate the handle of the instrument. We just see if the instrument will slip and slide and slide and glide 
over a range of 3 to 5 millimeters. Even checking the glide path can create dental debris, so it's good to recapitulate and re-irrigate to make sure there's a preferable pilot hole for the tip of that rotary instrument to follow. In one or more passes, we can carry the first shaper file to length again using a brushing motion. We'll carry a deeper wave of shaping more into the deeper portions of the preparation. By brushing and creating lateral space, it allows the instrument to easily float to the desired length. When the desired length has been achieved, remove the instrument, irrigate, recapitulate with the tin file, check patency, deliberately, do it frequently, and then re-irrigate. The S2 follows the S1, and again in one or more passes, the instrument can be carried to length. If the instrument doesn't want to go to length, remove the instrument recognizing there's a lot of debris accumulating in the cutting blades. Clear the blades, irrigate, recapitulate with a tin, and bring the S2 back in, and it will invariably move deeper into the canal and to length. So irrigate, recap, and re-irrigate. In fact, I do this just as you're seeing, because you're always one instrument away from victory and one instrument away from a potential upset. The first finisher is a 2007. It will generally go to length, and again, one or more passes. When you remove the instrument, check for its apical flutes. If you see dentin accumulate in those blades, you can be confident that this instrument just cut its shape in the apical one-third. Again, upon removing the F1, irrigate to remove gross debris, recapitulate and confirm patency, and then re-irrigate. We now want to know if we're complete, and we check that by using a gauging instrument. Remember, the 2002 will go passively through the whole length of the canal that was prepared with the 2007. So the instrument will either be loose at length, implying that the foramen is bigger than a 20, or the instrument will be snug at length. If the instrument is snug at length, you're ready to fit a carrier or fit a master cone. In this case, I'm using a non-standardized matching pro taper master cone, and we want to tease the cone into place in a wet canal. Check for tugback. It should be short and crisp at length. So, if you look at the post-operative film, you can begin to see the kinds of shapes that we can get with typically three instruments. Colleagues internationally are looking for simplicity in creating their shapes, and fully shaped canals invite disinfection and promote 3D obturation. This image is a summary of the ProTaper technique. Feel free to go to my website and download it at no charge, but you can pretty much follow these steps to review exactly what we did in the clinical case. Let's review the ProTaper shaping technique. I want to re-emphasize the importance of sequencing the preparation. We shape with the ProTaper files to do pre-enlargement to get early access to the apical one-third. We use the shapers in a floating and following manner emphasizing brushing. Frequently during the preparation sequence I want to emphasize re-irrigating and checking the glide path and maintaining patency. Once we've created deep shape, then we can be confident that we can fit our master cone, which is a non-standardized cone of 6% taper. The shaping files are essentially preparing the canal to receive either a master cone or a carrier-based obturation method. By evaluating the methods we've just described, you can begin to appreciate that ProTaper can deliver fully shaped canals, even using three instruments, finishing with the first finisher, which is a 2007, we typically get, according to evidence-based science, around eight or nine percent minimally deep shape. So shaping is the sine qua non of excellence. Shaping facilitates cleaning, and shaping facilitates three-dimensional obturation.